Hey, good afternoon everyone. Pastor Brett here. Um, okay, the uh, the witch at Endor. My interpretation. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this time. I pray that you would forgive us first and have your way with us. And uh, please have your way with me. Lord God, as I share your word, I pray that it would be an encouragement to those that hear. And uh, may I never be a discouragement. Um, Lord God, have your way. And uh, we give you thanks and praise for everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so 1 Samuel 28, um, and I'm reading from um, a, a New King James Version. This is a New King James Version open Bible that I found. Um, this is a, a beautiful Bible. Um, it says, uh, 1 Samuel 28, and now I'm looking at, remember the question, did God use the witch at Endor to raise the prophet Samuel to speak to Saul? Um, did God use or did God allow that to happen? Well, God obviously clearly in his sovereign um, rule and authority did allow the situation to come to pass. Um, and as it was written, Saul sought out the witch at Endor and the witch at Endor did her thing. But what was written was written so that we understand um, uh, it the way we're supposed to understand it. Watch this. Um, I'm looking at uh, verse 5. And Saul saw the army of the Philistines. He was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. So here's Saul afraid, scared to death. He says, when Saul inquired of the Lord, verse 6, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Okay, so God did not answer Saul. He wouldn't. God's not answering Saul. So Saul's not, he's, he's not happy with this. He's going to find an answer. <laughs> Verse 7. Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, in fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So Saul seeks a witch. He goes, disguises himself. He puts on clothes, other clothes, and he's, he goes and he brings a couple guys with him. And they came to the woman by night, it says, and he said, please conduct a seance for me and bring up for me the one I shall name for you. When the woman said to him, look, you know what Saul has done. Um, how he's cut off the mediums, the spiritists in the land. All right, Saul was eliminating all of, you know, anything that had to do with witchcraft, period. Saul was destroying it. Um, why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? So Saul swore to her to the Lord, by the Lord, as the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. So, um... You got Saul seeking this witch. Now he's, you know, making a deal with her. You know, tell me, do what I need you to do. Look at verse 12. And the, when the woman, all right, uh, verse 11 rather, then the woman said, whom shall I bring up for you? He said, bring up Samuel for me. So Saul clearly wants her to bring up Samuel. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice and the woman spoke. Now it says, when the woman saw Samuel, all right, now, because Saul, previous verse, wants Samuel, okay, when the woman saw this spirit, okay, she assumed it was Samuel. Watch. Um, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, This is what she sees now. I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, What is his form? And she said, an old man is coming up and he is covered with a mantle. Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, so now the writer here has an assumption that this is Samuel. So he writes Samuel. Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed for the Philistines make war against me and God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore 
neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called you, that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, So why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? And the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David. So this spirit, supposed to be Samuel, is telling Saul all this stuff that happened. The devil knows everything that's happened as well. Um, uh, you cannot convince me that this is the prophet Samuel. You, you can't do it because God is not going to do something that he said was an abomination. God doesn't say, do what I say and not what I do, does he? Does God say, do what I say and not what I do? No, because Jesus said, the, the Pharisees, what they tell you to do, that do and observe, but do not after their works, for they say and do not do. So they were hypocrites. Jesus called them hypocrites. He called them snakes. He called them vipers. Yeah, Jesus said the same thing that's being said here. All right. Do what I do. Don't just do what I say, but follow me because I'm doing this. This is God said this is an abomination. This is not something that God would do himself. Did he allow the devil to do all this? Absolutely. Look what he's allowed the devil to do all these years. Thousands of years have gone on. And yet he still continues to do the things that he does. Look what's happening in this world right now. Do you think that that's from God? That's a judgment of God? I believe that God foreknows everything. And that just because God foreknows it doesn't mean God made it happen. He just foreknew what was going to happen. Because God created the earth and he formed it and he set it in motion. The 24-hour period of time is absolute evidence of that. That's absolute evidence. The earth spins. That's because God set it in motion and now here we go and life goes on. Life goes on. Um, and God foreknew exactly what would happen along the way. Starts planting seeds. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the understanding that God's given to me. Um, I can see it clearly. I hope you can see it as clearly as I. Um, the Lord is absolutely sovereign, no doubt, and he allows everything for a perfect purpose. But this was definitely not Saul. Not the Samuel, rather the prophet. This was definitely not Samuel. Um, this was a demon spirit that was made to look like Samuel. Um, and and it proof that um, his prophecy didn't come to pass is in the fact that all of Saul's sons didn't die that day with Saul. All of his sons didn't die. Ishbosheth was still alive. He was the son of Saul. And. Uh, Hey, thank the Lord. So, um, well, I hope and pray that that's a blessing to you, that uh, um, that helps you, gives you some understanding. Um, but you need to know that God is not going to violate his word that in that way, clearly in that way, um, uh, by making something like that happen. No. Yeah, just not the Lord. Um, but it's, again... Um, what I believe, and I'm secure in that. Um, I'm absolutely secure in that. Um, I hope and pray that you can be and are and will be as well. Uh, know that God is sovereign. God is in absolute control. The Lord loves you. The Lord cares about you. He already knows what you're going to do, but he didn't make you do it. Hallelujah. That's what makes judgment just. That's what makes God's judgment a just judgment. Um, so, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I hope that helps. Have a great day, everybody. In Jesus' name.